studied rammed earth this semester. Um, this really started out with uh, the ambition to, we knew we were gonna build something big at the end. Um, and then we went with Professor Wade, uh, kind of treated him as our client sort of, to see what we were gonna make. And um, we ended up making this bench out of it. But there was a long grueling process from the beginning of the semester until now. So kind of the first thing that we started off doing was um, soil testing around here in Lubbock. Also trying to figure out kind of what type of soil is actually here in Lubbock to see if it's even viable for using rammed earth here. Um, kind of the main component that we were looking for was the clay content. Um, looking for an average about 20% clay content within the soil and by soil we mean about 18 to like two, yeah, two feet below um, that actual ground because anything above that will have organics in it. By organics, we mean roots, leaves, anything like that. And that can actually be degradable as you can kind of see in one of our early test subjects or test cylinders. Um, it, it actually breaks down the, the build um, over time. This, this turned out beautiful when we first did it. It had the right clay content and everything. And it was a raw design, which means that it didn't have any other binders added to it. But since it did have organics in it, it started breaking down. And that kind of pushed us to another direction. We started going a little deeper. We started looking at soils that we knew we were going to have many organics in them. But then we found that uh, the, the size of the granules themselves really, really came into a, to a factor. They, um, we have a very silty soil here in Lubbock, and um, meaning very fine, fine grain uh, soil. Um, great for agriculture, not so great for having a uh, very durable, long-lasting rammed earth uh, build. And uh, we proved that because we were able to make some cylinders, such as this one, where we had really, really fine um, sand and, and very, very nice uh, textures, very smooth surfaces, but the edges where no matter what we do, they would always be brittle. Um, we would, the only way we could compensate for that was adding in cement, and that was against our number one goal, which was just to do raw rammed earth. Um, which brings me to, to this, actually. Yeah. Well, we did a few other things here. So then after we started doing that, we were trying to stick to a lower cement content in it. Um, most of our test cylinders that we actually did were just about a 5%. Um, aggregate that we were kind of commonly using um, just to see if it actually show up was granite. It didn't really show up as much um, as we wanted to unless we added like a ton of it and it, it just kind of seemed to backfire a little bit. Um, so instead we started doing kind of these color tests. Um, these two looking more specifically at like a darker charcoal color because when you do add the cement it actually graze out um, the soil a lot and then more of kind of the extreme of a terracotta color and just like really pouring it in to see how much we could actually get out of it um, and that these kind of were all our test cylinders and this bad boy was kind of our first big build um, it was actually three of these blocks about this size with different um, all kinds of different uh, yeah different mixtures for each each block um, and when we took it out of the formwork it was standing perfectly fine but then we tried to tip it over and of course it acted like we thought it would um, break in shear and because this is such a compressive type of structure it only deals well with compression um, so when it acts in shear it does tend to break yep and pretty much any other force for that matter uh, tension included um, anytime you have any force that's not a gravity load you're going to experience some form of shear um, or undesired uh, action within these this material so we went with uh, learning from that we went with uh, reinforcing this with uh, steel rebar just like you would with concrete um, we have two uh, what is it quarter half inch rods yeah. going straight up vertically through this structure and that's keeping all of these three layers um, together and keeping them from um, lateral forces uh, 
keeping that from shearing away. So this will this will stand the test of time. Now we did experience some some problems. Um, um, mostly, and to kind of go on that a little bit too for helping reinforcement, um, we also started looking at weatherproofing a little bit more. Um, we were trying to look at actually in this test cylinder um, as a hundred percent the liquid in it that we added to it was acryl um, it's a sealer that is commonly used in concrete as well but then we also had a cement sealer a powder form sealer that we eventually used in this as well um, just to have that extra durability um, because it, it kind of creates a, a finer um, solid edge along this and it's not as brittle as the other ones that we were finding because of that sealer um, and then finally after we did our testing tested out different like variations of our our formula that we were gonna go for we, we kind of finished this yeah so let's talk about this for a second um, this is a oh, how much how much do you think this thing weighs oh I don't know I, I, I know we gathered about 1,800 pounds of dirt. We only used probably about a little more than half. Um, and that's from around here. We, we chose a specific specific location for that soil uh, that we knew worked well from our tests. Um, and then we assembled a formwork, of which uh, for the most part held together. It was in one corner where we experienced a, a bit of anomal an anomaly that caused this fracturing down here. And that's really important for us to look at because now we are we considering other options for how to repair these these uh, areas and um, then seal off so that they will stand the test of time as the rest of the build will. Um, the rest of the build went well. I don't think we saw any other major concerns as far as uh, cracks or anything like that other than this corner, which we are quite happy with considering. We use a pneumatic tamper with a uh, industrial sized air compressor and a lot of dirt, water, acryl, granite, gravel. Up nicely, so it's it's basically there. Got to bump up against the edge now.